Hello, the Skalo here. Welcome to the third episode of Iceland. On this episode, we're going to explore the highlands of Iceland. Let's go! Good morning! I just dropped Harris at the airport. He's leaving to go back to England and we have two and a half days of adventures to ourselves. Let's see what we're gonna see. Hopefully the volcano, there is a bit of indication of my erupting again, which is what we're hoping for. First stop for today, it's in Berlin. We are enjoying today because we have a lot to see, so let's do it. The waterfall Oxarafos in the canyon Almanacha at Big Peril is one of the best known waterfalls in Iceland, at least among Icelanders. The waterfall is rather small, only about 20 meters high, but is an important part of the overall natural wonders in the Pingreville National Park. Depending on the season, the waterfall may differ in volume, as the source, the river Oxara, is quite different from one season to the next. Interestingly, the waterfall Oxara Foss is actually a human-made waterfall. As strange as this might sound, geologists and historians have discovered that the river Oxara was moved hundreds of years ago to channel the water into the canyon Almanangja in the 9th century. The purpose was to provide water for the members and visitors of the Icelandic parliament, I think. So on this stop, we saw Oxara Foss waterfall. Now we're heading more to the center of Iceland. Time to put some petrol and carry on. Bridge Falls is a relatively small waterfall compared to many of its Icelandic counterparts. But its diminutive size does nothing to take away from its staggering beauty. Both locals and seasoned travelers regard Bruar Foss as one of the country's hidden gems, often labeling it Iceland's bluest waterfall. destination is Geysir. When you see that the bowling and bubble form, then the water column collapses and superheating occurs and then water flushes the steam in the pipe and Geysir erupts. So it's like a, not a volcano eruption but a water eruption. Let's go and see them in person. A favorite stop along the Golden Circle is the highly active Geysir hot spring area with boiling mud pits exploding geysers. A favorite is lively Strokur Geysir, which spouts water 30 meters high into the air every few minutes. Here we go! Fantastic! <laughs> what an experience! It's like 8 meters high. Huge. Geologists believe that the geothermal field has a surface area of approximately 3 square kilometers. Most of the springs are lying along a 100 meter wide strip of land running in the same direction as the tectonic lines in the area. From south to southwest, 
The area became active more than a thousand years ago and consists of more than a dozen hot water blowholes. The oldest account of the Geysir area dates back to 1294. Although the Great Geysir is less active these days, it did lend its name to hot springs all over the world. It was the first Geysir described in a printed source, along with Old Faithful in America's Yellowstone National Park, Geysir is the most famous Geysir in the world. That was the experience of Strakur erupting. Super cool. Gulfos, translated to Golden Falls, is one of Iceland's most iconic and beloved waterfalls found in the Hvita River, a canyon in southwest Iceland. The water in Hvita River travels from the glacier Langutskul before cascading 32 meters down Gulfos two stages in a dramatic display of nature's raw power. This incredible sight is seen by most visitors as it is on the Golden Circle sightseeing route. Because of the waterfall's two stages, Gulfos should actually be thought as two separate futures. The first shorter cascade is 11 meters tall, while the second drop is 21 meters. The canyon walls on both sides of the waterfall reach heights of up to 70 meters, descending into the great Gulfos Gufuchur Canyon. Geologists believe that this canyon was formed by glacial outbursts at the beginning of the last age. In the summer, approximately 140 cubic meters of water surges down the waterfall every second, whilst in the winter that number drops to around 109 cubic meters. With such energy, visitors should not be surprised to find themselves drenched by the waterfall's mighty spray should they get too close. So we just finished with Gulfos, a huge and powerful, powerful waterfall and river. And now we're heading to the Glacier Rivers. I'm gonna see some nice light blue and base colors from above. When driving to the F roads, you have to pass across a few rivers, which is a really cool experience. Sandevatn is a rather large lake in the highlands of Iceland, close to the glacier Langjokul and Gjalvegur mountain road. There used to be a large mud flats around Sandevatn and in dry periods this caused much sand erosion down in the farming country. To prevent this, the water level of Sandevatn was raised in 1994 by closing the two outlets Sanda and Asbrantsa. This created a new outlet in the Sanda River, flowing east into Hvita. Whilst exploring the highlands, I was fortunate enough to see a few rainbows in the sky. drive the Atlantic Highlands, please keep in mind that they are only open during summertime. During the winter, the efforts of the Highlands are closed due to heavy snow and can be accessible by flight to see them from above or with snowmobiles.
way to Kerlingar Jol, we're passing the lake Wittervatten and the glacier in the area of Borga Bigd. We also saw some shipmen taking their ship north, but more about them later when we're going to meet them, bath together at thermal pools and sing Icelandic songs. There is no wild ship in Iceland, every ship belongs to somebody. In springtime the ship owners set them free so they can eat grass everywhere in the country as wild animal. In September it's the ship round up groups of farmers and Icelanders and pretty much everybody who wants to help round up sheep and sort them to bring them back. Every sheep has an identification in its ear. Traditionally that's how people used to meet their loved one. Nowadays this could also happen. One of the beautiful waterfalls in the highland is Girgarfoz, located near the highland road Gjalvegur, number 35, just by the road number F347, leading to Kerlingarfjö. Right now we're in the center of Iceland. You can see behind me a nice waterfall. We're going to a mountain that has a colorful slopes and the volcano started erupting so we might have to go back that muddy road and those crazy kilometers. Kirgarfos has spectacular surroundings although the waterfall is only about 5 meters high. It is fed by a powerful source which has an impressive volume. The flood can vary depending on the season with more volume during spring and early summer. The surrounding area around Kirgarfos is quite impressive with the mountains in the background and the fascinating gorge downstream. Made it to 
paradise of landscape. Zip, 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 zip. Right now we are in Kerlingar Stjol. It's this beautiful mountain behind me that has it's so colorful. And we're going to hike it, take some nice photos and explore it and see the, the steam coming from the mountain and the green colors and the blue waters of the river. I think this place is one of the most unique I've ever been. Everything about it. It smells sulfur, snow, smoke, the river, everything. It's very volcanic, very different. Kellingarfjol is a relatively young range of mountains having been formed by Iceland's volcanic activity approximately 10,000 years ago. This activity is still very apparent. The rhyolite mountains have been dyed a beautiful spectrum of colors by the rising elements of the earth. And the region is home to the third largest geothermal area in the country. This geothermal area is named Hvera Dalir and it boasts geysers, steam vents, bubbling clay pits and hot springs that is possible to bath in. easily spend a few hours just seeing the colors, seeing the sounds. The day is fantastic because it's sunny, the island is advantage. It's the mud and how bad my shoes have become from walking on this terrain. But it should come with a 4x4. Four four. Right now we are in the mist, the sulfur coming up from the holy water inside the air. Woo! Look at that. Right here, boiling water.
I was flying my drone, I saw another one in the air and I decided to go as close as possible. And the outcome looks like a drone commercial in that magnificent scenery. All that is glacier. That's the sunset. And you can hear the absolute quietness. Hello car. So far, so good. We're going to some hot springs, then put some petrol, and then to our next destination. Quera Velir is a geothermal field in the north of Langjokul Glacier. The place has been a popular resting place in highland travels since the age of settlement, 11 to 1200 years ago. Let me tell you a story. I have been to these natural pools and I met those people. Those people are from Iceland. There are 30 people that are handling sips. And uh, what they're doing is they leave the sip for three to four months alone in the nature. They're tagged. And after they go, they pick them up. And for a week, they bring them slowly, slowly. Every day they do some kilometers. Each of them has four horses, so they use two horses every day and the other two are resting. And more or less, there are 16,000 ships that have taken them back north to where they're from to butcher them. It's for meat, it's to eat them. And the reason that they let them by themselves for so long is to be more wild and to have more meat on them. Per week, they take about a kilo, which is very interesting. All this information, are about those people that I met from Iceland and they're locals and they do this every year. They start from let's say central south and they go north. The third episode just came to an end. On the next one we're exploring the northeast part of the island so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one and until then stay safe and have fun. Bye!